When a doctor approaches a patient with a medical problem, we want to know, obviously, what's causing it. Pain is the most common symptom that people have. Any medical symptom, whether it's fatigue, whether it's uh, trouble with sleep, anxiety, depression, constipation, urinary frequency, any symptom is basically caused by one of two things. Number one, is it some kind of tissue damage? Everyone knows if you break your arm, it's going to hurt. If you have cancer, this may hurt. And all doctors know that. That's what we look for. That's what doctors do. Generally, they're pretty good at finding what's causing the damage. But a lot of symptoms don't have tissue damage. Could be something else. And that is nerve pathways. Very few doctors understand that nerve pathways can cause real and severe pain or other symptoms. All pain is real. Now, a nerve pathway is millions of brain cells that create something to happen in the body. When you learn how to ride a bike, that's a nerve pathway. When you uh, sign your name, the way we walk, the way we chew, 5 times 5 is 25. Those are all nerve pathways. And pain can be a nerve pathway. When pain is a nerve pathway and other things, as I mentioned, like fatigue or anxiety or sleep problems, the brain is activating those pathways and there doesn't have to be any tissue damage to create this. What's important to understand is that people also have what I would call no pain pathways. Pathways in the brain that's no pain. These pain pathways that have been learned are there. Just like learning how to ride a bike, you don't unlearn that. Our job helping people get rid of their pain is to stop them from activating these pain pathways, which are activated by fear and stress and triggers, and start activating these no pain pathways that are there. And when we do that, the pain is turned off. These are activated by knowledge, by power, and by confidence. So when an injury occurs in the body, the nerve pathways are sent to the brain and the brain has to interpret those nerve pathways. And the way the brain works is that the amygdala, the danger center of the brain, and other areas like anterior cingulate cortex, prefrontal cortex, interprets pain as either danger or no danger. All pain actually occurs in the brain. The conscious awareness of pain is in the brain even when there's a tissue damage type of problem. Most of the time, when there's an injury, the nerve signals go to the brain and the brain interprets those nerve signals as danger, as something wrong creates a fear, and that danger signal creates this pain pathway and then pain develops and the pathway will become learned. The important thing to remember is that this danger signal, as we mentioned, is triggered by physical injuries but it turns out it's also triggered by emotional injuries or emotional events. Research has shown that emotional trauma triggers the exact same danger pathways that create pain in the brain. What we see in our patients is that stress occurs in life as for most people, but most of our patients have more than the usual stress, not all of them. But a lot of our patients have had very difficult childhoods. Uh, they may have divorce, abandonment, neglect, abuse of some kind. And that stress, those hurts that occur in childhood, uh, create pathways of danger, sensitivity to danger, sensitivity to fear. And usually in childhood, there may be no symptoms. There may be no pain at that point in time. Some children clearly develop sleep problems, anxiety problems, headaches, stomach pain, um, but oftentimes there's no symptoms because what's happening is that the stress is interpreted by them as being normal and uh, the symptoms are not emerging, but the fear pathway is developing. And then later in life, when another stress occurs, say uh, you have a uh, young woman with a emotionally controlling or emotionally abusive uh, father, and then she becomes a teenager here and she gets a boyfriend who turns out to be emotionally abusive. 
uh, start spreading rumors about her in school, etc., and then she may start to get headaches. And then later in life, other stresses may occur. Uh, there may be, she may marry somebody who's um, also emotionally abusive or cheating on her or she's worried about him harming her children. And then at that point, new pathways begin to form. Pathways of irritable bowel syndrome, pathways of pelvic pain, or a variety of other painful uh, nerve pathways. And then later in life, maybe there's uh, a car accident. Well, these are emotional hurts, and this was a physical hurt. But the car accident, being a physical injury, is still triggering those danger signals, triggering the fear pathways that have been sensitized through her life. Uh, and then new symptoms may occur, such as back pain, uh, neck pain, and then new stresses may occur. There may be problems with, with work or jobs or whatever, and then it becomes anxiety, depression, and fatigue. And what we see is this pattern. People say, well, why would a car accident you know, cause all this? You know, most people heal from a car accident, and the body does heal. But the nerve pathways can create s tremendous pain when you're living in this pattern. And that's what we see in our patients. How do we uh, reverse this? What's the general treatment program for nerve pathway pain, mind-body pain? And there's four steps. The first step is education. It's understanding that pain, when there's no tissue damage, Pain and these kinds of syndromes are caused by nerve pathways that are reversible. Those can be controlled. Those can be changed. It's understanding that, it's believing that, and it's having confidence that you can overcome that. The second step is behavioral work. And what we find is that when patients are afraid of their symptoms, pain causes fear. Fear causes more pain, and that often evolves into a vicious cycle of horrible and severe pain. And so if people understand that they can get better, that these nerve pathways are not going to harm them, that they can control them, then they can stop being afraid of the symptoms. When they stop the fear, they can learn to take control of them, and there's a whole variety of techniques for making the pain go away, for taking control of it. The third step is emotional work. And there's a whole variety of emotional techniques, including expressive writing and also intensive short-term dynamic psychotherapy where people are actually expressing the emotions that are creating this danger signal. And the fourth one is making changes in their life so that they can be powerful and they can learn that they don't have to be prey to the kinds of situations that have hurt them and harmed them that have been learned in their childhood. And so if you're somebody who has real symptoms that are caused by nerve pathways and not tissue damage, and we figure that out for you, and you begin to understand that you can get better, and you start doing the behavior work to take control of the symptoms, and you start doing the emotional work to reverse the stressful situations that are occurring and have occurred in your life, and you begin to stand up for yourself and make changes in your life, there's a high likelihood that these symptoms are going to go away and you're going to get better.